Hello everyone, welcome back to Air Japanese Sounds. And first of all, I'd like to apologize about the various insect noises you may hear in the background. That's because we are right in the middle of summer here in Japan. And what better to have in the middle of the summer that to have a nice city pop event on vinyl. And that took place uh, last Saturday when I'm recording this. So on the 8th of August, and yeah, there are a lot of things to talk about. And first of all, I'd like to say it's awesome to have that kind of event that was organized by all the big record stores in Tokyo, you know, HMV, Disc Union. Everybody is taking part at this event. And not only do you have a lot of great uh, new re-releases of CD Pop, you actually get a few new albums that are getting released and a few represses. Like you have all sorts of stuff going on and I think it's great to have one day to symbolize all that and for all city pop fans all over the world even though right now it's a bit difficult to go to Japan for those who are who weren't already in here a few months ago but it's great to have that kind of event to all be together in one uh, even symbolic way and to be around all the albums that we love anyway I'd like to take this video as an opportunity to talk about all the different albums that are getting either new releases, new presses, you know, just to take a few seconds to talk about each one, which ones you should pay the most attention to. And the first one I'd like to talk about is probably the one that is the most unique for its re-release. It's the new high quality release of Taiko Ouniki's Sun Shower because it's on two LPs instead of one. And I've seen many people talk about it and well, what uh, more is there to say than just it's a two LP record? What really is the point of having an album that you don't really need, like you don't need a high end setup to enjoy a sun shower to its full potency. So why put it onto records? I don't know. But what is sure is that if you want the highest quality possible on vinyl, chances are this is it. But for sure, if, if you've been waiting to have a high quality pressing of Sun Shower, this is the only one. And I guess it kind of makes the, pr uh, the previous re-releases kind of useless now. I'm referring more specifically to the 2014 re-release. Now you might as well get the 2LP one. I'm not sure about the price either, but that's something to keep in mind. Another very big new release is Pacific from the Sound Image collection by the Sony CBS label. This is, uh, as far as I know, the only time Pacific has been reissued, apart from the 1983 re-release, but this is from such a long time ago, it doesn't really count. So this is the first time it's actually getting a reissue, and I think it's great. The OB is very faithful to the original. You're getting as much as you could from, from this re-release, and, you know, the price is what it is, even though the original is not that expensive. If you, you know, look for it in Japan, if you are not too picky about finding it in like perfect mint condition, you can, I think, easily find it for 6,000 yen uh, around that ballpark. So is there really a point to getting the reissue? I think yes, because it, make it makes it so that you don't have to worry about the sound quality. As we know, that kind of record for what could be qualified as easy listening back then, those records were not particularly taken care of that well. So I guess if you just want to have the record in good condition, you want to enjoy the obi and everything in a... Yeah, you, if you want to enjoy everything and you also want to support the modern CD pop market, this is a good opportunity. By the way, not only Pacific is getting a new reissue from the Sony uh, Sound Image series, you also have the Agency, you have New York, and you have Seaside Lovers which are all three getting a new reissue. Although Seaside Lovers already had uh, a reissue by Ship to Shore in 2020, but that one was USA specific, whereas all those ones are uh, Japan domestic reissues. So if that makes a difference to you. The agency is not as well known as Pacific and it's not that hard to find for, you know, again, in the 5,000 yen ballpark, but it's nice to get a reissue if you again are looking to have the best condition just enjoy the vinyl don't worry about you know dealing with Japanese sellers getting with Bai or Zen Market to ship the items to you and this is a good opportunity for that now as far as New York is concerned this is by far the least valuable album of the Sound Image series I think the album is great but for some reason it doesn't have the same popularity as the other ones in that case well because the original is so much cheaper than the reissue, 
I'm not sure about the points, but if you are going to get one reissue, you might as well get all of them, right? And finally, for Seaside Lovers, this is a, a bit of a different one because Ship to Shore had the opportunity to release on the US market their own Seaside Lovers reissue, but I don't think they had a hobby with it. In this, you get not only a hobby, but if you know the original, which has, I don't know what you call it, but the hobby is like placed on top of uh, the jacket as opposed to on the side. This one actually gets a new design of the OB that goes on the on the side like a regular one. I think it definitely looks great and I'm not generally a big fan of reissue but I'm sorry for I'm sorry if you're already about the US reissue but I mean here if you had the choice between the two apart from if you you know if you want the US reissue the advantage is it's already in the US so it will facilitate finding it easily in record shops and all that. But if you have the patience to get the Japanese reissue, that is the one I would get personally as a collector. But to each their own, and if you want the color wax, you will have to get the US reissue on the Japanese one. I think it's black wax. Now moving on, we have two pretty big reissues of albums that didn't, that hadn't gotten one before. It's uh, Yoshino Fujimao's first album and uh, Mai Yamane's Tasogare. Those two albums are pretty big names in CD pop, and it's great to see a reissue with those, especially given that Yoshino Fujimao's album is hovering around the 10,000 yen mark, and Tasogare is, I think, around the 7,000 yen mark, although I haven't checked recently, and the way prices are evolving so fast these days, it's very, very hard to keep track, to be honest. And I think it's a great opportunity to get reissues if you're a bit touchy about condition again. It's mostly uh, an issue about practicality, like. Right now, you can get all those different reissues of various albums in one go, in one order, with guaranteed mint quality OB inserts. I think to have that peace of mind, it's worth something. And given the generally around 4,000 yen mark of the reissues when you include tax, and I guess you get free shipping if you order enough, I think it's a good deal when you think about it. Another artist who got reissues for albums that didn't have any previously is Minako Yoshida. And I think, um, in particular, her first and second album, neither of them has had any reissue before. So again, same argument, it's a good opportunity to get them. But also there are some uh, represses of albums of hers that already had reissues. So you probably need to check on Discogs which one of those have had a reissue before and which one of those haven't, just so you don't have to... Like maybe you can find another version of the reissue for cheaper elsewhere. Also, it's important to know that we are getting a few represses for pretty big albums. I'm talking in particular about Love Trip and First Light. Now, the big difference between those two represses is the repress of First Light is specifically mentioned to be a second press. Now, I don't know how that will translate into the album itself. Will it be visible that you are getting the second press as opposed to the first press of the reissue? To me, it doesn't really matter. I'm more of an original kind of guy. But if First Light is going to become a regularly re-released album, you might want to check what press you are getting, which presses have the best quality, and so on. But as for Love Trip, um, well, it's pretty well known that Love Trip isn't really dealing with uh, press numbers, because by now we are, I think, at least at the fourth or fifth repress of uh, this reissue, which is good, because if you look at the evolution of prices, every time the price goes up and up just due to the drive in demand. And I've seen the album sell for like $100 sometimes at the times where the demand was high enough. And I think it's great to see uh, Universal. I think it's Universal Music who's reissuing this one. I think it's great that they are willing to, you know, pump out the represses enough so that the demand uh, can be fulfilled by all the supply they, they can give. I think it's great, but someday probably the reissue is going to end. And when that happens, who knows uh, how the price will evolve. In any case, uh, getting this repress as opposed to any other one should be the same, but I guess it's a good point. To, it's a good opportunity to get it from the, you know, first hand, not having to go through a reseller who will probably want to make at least some profit from it. So it's a good opportunity. And that about sums up all the different reissues we are getting for this uh, 2020 summer CD Pop on vinyl. I haven't talked about the new original releases because I'm not really familiar with any of them. But if you have anything to, to share about that, I think the comments would be a great place for that. All right, so by now you should have a pretty good idea of what 
reissues, represses we're getting for this 2020 summer City Pop on Vinyl events. I think it's a great event. I have said in the beginning, but I think those kind of events should be more frequent because it gives more visibility to the hobby. And hopefully it will help bring more people in, and especially in Japan, where you can notice that really the record stores are heavily marketing for because there is such a huge market for Japanese people that haven't yet been exposed to city pop and when that happens who knows how how things are going to evolve anyway let me know if you enjoy this kind of content that is more oriented towards uh, current events reissues represses or let me know if you would rather see more content focused on the collectible aspect of things. Anyway, this was Rare Japanese Sounds. I hope you have a nice summer and until next week, stay tuned.